Greetings, disciples, friends, and wayward souls, and welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about feeding, and particularly some of the issues that I've been seeing a great deal of people having with feeding their animals in the game. Now I'm posting another video alongside this one that goes into more details on keepers and all of the other staff, how to make them more efficient, so be sure to check that out once you're done with this video, it is the next one in the playlist. Now recently I've seen the largest number of people with issues in the game that were not caused by bugs related to keepers, especially keepers that are not feeding animals, and today we're going to go specifically into how to fix this behavior 90% of the time. Now there's still that bugginess in the game because this is fairly early in its launch, so we're going to see this uh, changing as time goes on, and these mechanics themselves might change, so keep that in mind. Now I did mention that the way the game mechanics actually work is a little bit strange and if you're not entirely familiar with them then it can seem like a bug. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over what keepers do and what the necessary conditions are that need to be met for them to feed your animals. So basically every keeper has a roster of things they do and they have an order they do them in. Now for this moment we're going to exclude exhibits because we'll talk about those in just a second but they have three primary duties. That is poop water, and food. Now this is one you might not even be familiar with, but we'll get to that in just a second. So poop and spoiled food, or cleaning the habitats, is the first thing the keepers do. So the second they walk in this door, the first thing they check for is poop and spoiled food. If there is a, a certain amount of poop that's over a certain threshold, they'll go ahead and clean that, and if there's any spoiled food, then they will go ahead and clean that as well. Now keep in mind that if there is spoiled food in the habitat, they will automatically go ahead and assume that the animal needs more food. This is sometimes wrong, which comes to its own little bug, but again, that's something that we can't really help you with too much. If your food is spoiled, just delete this bin, and then eventually the keeper will come in here and refill the food when it needs to be filled, not sooner. Now the second thing keepers are going to look at is water. Now these two instances where you have either a water pipe or a natural water source with a water purifier, there is no need for this step at all, but if you have a water trough or a water bowl, the keepers will then come over and fill the bowl. They don't need to go to the keeper hut to do this, but they do need to walk manually to each source of water like this. And if it does run empty, then your animals will start to dehydrate. So I would highly suggest getting a water pipe, honestly, because it's just so much easier even than having a source of water. Unless your animals need one, but yeah, let's just hope they don't. Now lastly, they're going to check to see if your animals need food. Now it's kind of weird the way they do this, and it doesn't always really work out in your favor, but there are three things that they're checking for when they're trying to figure this out. Now the first thing, which is what we already talked about, is that all of the poop needs to be cleaned out of the exhibit before they will start to even look to see if there's food, and once that poo is cleaned, they'll actually check and make sure there's zero food in the habitat. Now if there's even one unit of food in some random feeder somewhere, then they will consider that as food in the habitat and they will not add more. Now you have to keep in mind that if any of these are inaccessible, then it's going to screw you up because if the keeper can't reach one of these feeders, then they can't get the food out of it or put new food into it, so it's going to kind of create a weird little loop for them, and sometimes that can bug them out and make it to where they're not filling the food. And the other two sources of food, aside from this ton of enrichment objects, are just regular feeding platforms of different varieties. And also, you're also going to look at food on the floor. So if there's any food on the ground, then that means that the keepers could not find an accessible enrichment object or food trough that was able to hold all of the food. And do keep in mind that this affects food quality, so the best food quality is going to be coming from the enrichment objects, the second best is going to be coming from feeding platforms, and then you're going to get the lowest food quality eating off the floor. I believe animals can also eat trash if people come into their exhibit via a walkthrough exhibit and actually dump their trash on the ground, which probably has an even lower food quality, but I've never actually seen that happen in my zoos, so I'm not sure. Now, if there is zero food in the entire habitat, then the keepers are going to stop and they are going to make sure that there are no hungry animals. Now, a hungry animal is any animal whose nourishment stat is below 100. 
As you can see here, it says the animal is not hungry. And once it goes down below 100, it will say that they are hungry. And this is the last condition that the keeper checks before they fill the food. Something else that you want to keep in mind is that when keepers do fill these food objects, they have a particular order. So they're always going to fill the enrichment objects first. This is kind of troublesome, especially if your enrichment objects are particularly far away from this gate right here. I'll just show you an example real quick. You have a different configurations you can use. So for instance, if you want, you can have the enrichment objects out here. And the reason you'd want to do that is so that the guests get a better view of the animals since they will be closer to them more frequently. Because obviously every time they want to eat, they're either going to come to these things or they're going to come to the food troughs. Now another option, and this is one that I like to do myself, is typically to have your food troughs and your enrichment objects close to the keeper gate. So that way you still get the bonus from these enrichment objects and the animals are still eating, but you don't actually have to have your keepers occupied like 90% of the time just to walk all the way across your habitats. Also, if you like, you can do this without having any enrichment objects and just having their water up close to the front here since that normally doesn't need to be refilled and they do have to come back and forth and you can have the regular enrichment objects right up here where people can see them. Then of course you're also going to still have your feeding trough generally back here and you almost always want to have your feeding trough back here even in this setup because like I said they're going to fill these enrichment objects first and then they're going to fill the trough and then they're going to put everything else on the floor if there's not enough space. Now, they only bring enough food or one meal for each animal and that kind of leads to some problems but it also makes sure that the food doesn't spoil which is something that you also want to avoid especially since it's so expensive. Now that is actually about all there is to the feeding issue that people have been having. Obviously there are some bugs going around like I said so it might still be something related to that that's kind of beyond your control but we're going to talk about some more ways to actually maximize the efficiency of your keepers. So make sure that you stay tuned for that, and then we're going to also go into details about each of the other five types of staff. So if you'd like to check out that next video, you can just either let the playlist roll, click the thing on the end screen, or you can click the link in the description. Also, be sure to check out my channel for tutorials on this game and soon others, as well as any reviews or let's plays for games that you probably will enjoy, because my selection is quite diverse. Anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and like the video, share with anybody that you think could benefit from it as well. Let me know in the comments what you thought or if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching. You guys have been great, and I've been Hipster Jesus. Out.